Hello, Oscillator Sync here and happy Mini Freak firmware update day to all those who celebrate because yes indeed, today Arturia have released the 2.0 firmware for the Mini Freak. It's available right now and you can install it by making use of the Mini Freak V software. There is, I think, probably one big headliner addition in this firmware, which is the addition of the wavetable oscillator type, and we will get to that uh, later on in the video. But there are a bunch of other things that I want to highlight to you first, because I think often with these updates, there's like one big new thing, and these sort of little useful things that have also been added kind of slip under the radar a little bit, and there's some real corkers in this one that enhance what you can do, some which are actually fairly big deals and so much are just sort of quality of life things. Uh, yeah, so in this video we're going to go through uh, all of the interesting things that have been added in this firmware update. The first thing I'll mention is not necessarily an update to the Mini Freak itself. Uh, however, Arturia have launched the Mini Freak's Sound Store, uh, which allows you to get new presets for your Mini Freak. Uh, you can get them all via the Mini Freak V software. It's in the main menu, you'll find it up at the top. And at launch, there's a combination of paid for and free patch packs. I think there's two big paid for packs and then three, I think, uh, smaller free packs. And I'm excited to say that one of the free packs is one that I made for Artoria earlier this year. And I'm really proud of the sounds that are in there. So I hope you can check the one out as soon as it's free. I'll do a video in the next couple of days going through the sounds uh, from my pack uh, in there. Uh, yeah, so go and check out the sound store and see if there's any new patches that you can grab for your mini freak that you like the sound of. I guess we'll carry on now with what's probably the second biggest update in this firmware, which is that we have a new effect type called Super Unison. So I have a basic, interesting chord there, uh, a, a basic polypad going on here. And if we turn on the Super Unison, which is in effects slot one, it sounds like this. lovely and wide sounding. So what this is doing is it's duplicating our sound six times in DSP. It's applying moving detune to each of them, and then it's spreading out each of those duplicates across the stereo range, which kind of gets us in a similar sort of place as we can get with some other synths which have stereo VCAs for spreading out the voices, although it's a little bit different. Yes. Uh, so as with all of our effects, we have our three knobs here, which affect various different parameters. And I'll start with the amount knob, actually, because this is our wet dry mix. And if we turn it all the way down, it is just our original sound. And we can start to mix in that unison. So if that first uh, example was a little bit aggressively wide, We can just mix in a little bit of this sound, which I think is, is really nice. And it's, I kind of prefer this used a bit more subtly for a lot of patches, especially a patch like this. But we can, of course, make it more aggressive. And this is a wet dry mix. So at the full amount here, our original dry sound is completely gone. Uh, and so the, the mono part of our sort of stereo spread, the mono image has kind of disappeared a little bit. Which could actually be useful in a mix if you've got like another sound going down the middle. So this has kind of got rid of that middle part of the sound. I'll just put it somewhere more sensible for a second. Um, the middle knob here is a filter that is applied just to the unison signal. Uh, at the center point, there's no filtering going on. If you go down from the centering point, from the center point, sorry, um, we're going to apply a low pass filter. So you can hear that our unison sounds are getting darker, but our dry sound is not. So we've still got that, um, so this there's our dry sound, which is quite a lot brighter than our unison duplicates now. And of course this is modulatable as well, so you could do 
do that kind of thing in the mod matrix, which might be really cool, actually. Um, perhaps we'll do that a bit later when we're making a patch. Going above the um, center point, we're going to high pass instead. So these are both ways for us to move the unison sound a bit out of the way of our main sound. Kind of gets a sort of airy, sort of just fuzz around our sound, which is quite nice. It'd be nice with a bit of reverb on it, I think. So I'll just put that back into the middle again. Our time knob is going to affect the detune amount. So down at the bottom, we get almost this comb filtering sound because there's so little difference between the duplicates. Quite a cool sound though, actually. Nice sort of glassiness to it. As we turn it up, we get more detune introduced. And we kind of move through sort of more flangey type sounds through chorusy type sounds. And then as we're up in the sort of final quarter, we're sort of obviously out of tune. And I think there's a wider modulation being applied as well. So that's pretty aggressive, but with a little bit of low pass, and maybe just dialing it back a little bit. There's probably some interesting patches that you can make around that sort of area. So the other thing we have here, as we do on all of our other effects, are the different subtypes as well. And some of these are quite interesting, actually. Uh, so let me just get to kind of like a, a decent midway point. So we can definitely hear what it's doing. Yeah, just, just short of being seasick, I think. So this mode that we're currently on here is called Classic. Uh, the next one is Ravy. So I'll just compare, here's classic. Oh, sorry. Here's classic. And here's ravey. So ravey pulls out quite a lot of the bottom end. And it's not the same vibe as the high pass filter. It's almost like a, a slight resonance to the way it's pulled stuff out. The next one is called Soli, which kind of goes the other way and goes darker. So compared to Classic, it's Classic. It's Soli. It's not as wide either. It's actually really nice. I think this is my favourite mode, as it happens. It's easy to get this one to sit more nicely with a patch. Uh, this next one is called Slow, which kind of does what you'd expect. The modulation to the detune is slower. Some nice sort of tight, weird room sounds with a low detune with this one. This one feels very 80s to me. Uh, these next few are interesting, and um, what they appear to do is uh, wait for a signal to come into the effect and then increase the depth of various parts of the effect as we go. So it's probably easier if I just turn the amount up a little bit here. We'll just make the detune a bit more obvious as well. So if you listen carefully, When I first play a note, it's not that detuned, and then it gets more detuned 
afterwards. Now, it's worth bearing in mind that these effects are um, applied across the whole keyboard, so it's not going to be able to do this sort of per note that you play. But, so if I play a chord and then play another note on top of it, it's already going to be sitting within that deeper D tune. I find this one a little bit interesting because it kind of has that... I know this is... <laughs> Do you remember those cow toys? That's why they go oh, 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 when you turn them over. It kind of makes that sound when, <laughs> when you trigger it. And I'm not sure if I'm totally into that. Yeah, like it's really obvious on deeper D tunes. And it sounds more like a flanger on lower D tunes. Yeah, a bit of an odd one. Um, uh, so that's slow trig. We also have wide trig. which I think also applies more of the stereo panning as it as the note plays. Like it starts quite mono. You still get the cow sound though. Um, we have a mono version of this one as well. I kind of wish there was just a straight up mono version without this trick thing going on. That one has some weird behaviours when it's in mono. So I kind of just like a standard mono one. Perhaps in the next update we'll get that. And then we finally have this one called Wavy. And this one sounds not as wide as like the classic. Even it's almost like it's doing like some sort of phase inversion or something. I quite like this one for more subtle things as well. So we have various different flavours here. Some of them are more extreme and some of them are more subtle. I prefer the subtle ones as it, as it goes, but that's just me. We do also, of course, have a bunch of effects which allow us to widen things a little bit as well. Uh, so here's the dry sound again. And here's Super Unison. Probably the closest contemporary to this is going to be the chorus. And you can hear it's quite a different vibe, much more of a swirly thing going on there. And not as obviously um, stacked voices, it's more kind of trying to emulate that. So chorus, super unison. Uh, we also have the phaser, which obviously is a very different vibe in terms of spreading things out. But certainly a lot more subtle than chorus or super unison. And some of the modes are slightly more obviously stereo than the others, I think space. Makes things more obviously stereo. We also have the flanger. Which obviously sounds like a flanger. And again doesn't give you that kind of voice stacking thing. So it's definitely a useful new sort of entirely unique thing in terms of what was currently offered on the Mini Freak, so a welcome addition. Right, next we'll look at what might be considered kind of quite a minor quality of life thing, but I think it could be quite a big deal when it comes to finessing more performable patches on the Mini Freak, and it's all to do with the macro assignments. So for those of you who aren't aware, on the Mini Freak, the macro sliders, which we select by pressing this button here, allow us to control multiple uh, parameters on the Mini Freak, uh, all using one slider, and those parameters can be moving by different amounts, they could be going in different directions. Uh, and to assign something, we go into assign mode by doing shift and macro, we choose which of these two strips we're working with, or just work with this first one. And then generally speaking, what you do is you turn one of the knobs um, to select a depth, 
Uh, so let's say we wanted to modulate the cutoff frequency of the filter down uh, when we move the slider. And there it is assigned there as a macro, and then we could assign other things that could all be moving at the same time. I'll just remove that for a second. The one blind spot that the macros had, however, was that you couldn't use them to control the depth of a modulation assigned in the mod matrix. Uh, but in this new version, you can. So let me give you an example of that. So let's say on this patch, which is just using the noise engineering saw X, I wanted to um, maybe affect the the wave control to get that sort of faux sync sound. Uh, we would come into our mod matrix, we'd go to, uh, we'll use the cycling envelope for this, uh, wave one, and we could turn that amount up. We can all do synth mouth together. Whoa. Which is a, a cool sound. But let's say that we wanted to control the depth of that modulation using the uh, macro controls. So I'll turn this down to begin with. And the way that it works is this. Uh, you start by selecting which one of these slots that you want to control in the mod matrix, which is our wave one here. We go into this assign here, make sure we're on the right slider. And then we tap onto here to um, select the cycling envelope to wave mount here. And uh, we can turn this up, uh, maybe not all the way using the edit knob here and now we have control over that mod matrix slot as a macro this actually opens up a bunch of ways for you to build your macros around having performable modulations especially when you're making use of the sequencer that can be quite transformative so as I say, it feels like like a, a minor quality of life thing, but I think this is secretly kind of a big deal on this update, especially if you're doing sort of more in-depth sound design on the Mini Freak. Right, so just one last thing I want to talk about before we get on to the main event. And this again feels like a kind of a minor thing, uh, kind of a quality of life thing, but it does allow you to do something that you couldn't do on the uh, previous firmware on the Mini Freak. And this is in regards to the wave shaper on the LFO. So on the Mini Freak, we have a good range of LFO shapes, all the standard stuff you would expect to maybe see. Uh, but we also have this thing called the wave shaper, which allows you to draw your own LFO shapes, or kind of it did on the old firmware, um, because it, you couldn't kind of draw your own LFO shapes. And I'll show you what I mean now. So I've made um, a little LFO shape here. I'll just go into the edit page so you can see I've done it just on the hardware and I've built this kind of multi-stage uh, triangle, kind of a quantized triangle, step triangle type thing, which is a, is a cool sound, sort of semi sample and holdy, but not really. Um, and this is the problem. So if um, I come across to say a triangle wave and let's assign LFO one to the wave on the oscillator here. So they can hear the harmonics be modulated and you can hear how fast they're going. Well, 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 well. So the expectation, if I go over to my, oh, changing the right there. Okay. So the expectation there is if I go across to my wave shaper, we should be getting a kind of thing, but we don't. We get this much slower movement instead. And the reason for this is that previously on the Mini Freak, each step of the wave shaper would last as long as an entire uh, oscillation of the LFO. So this is a 16 step wave shaper. So it's actually effectively running 16 times slower than the original LFO, which is fine if you're trying to sort of sequence something, but not if you're trying to define an actual LFO shape. So what we have in this new version, if we come into the sound edit down to LFO and down to shaper one rate or shaper two rate, depending on which LFO you're using, uh, there's now an option to go between one step, which is the default behavior and all steps. And now if I press a key, 
we can hear my stepped uh, triangle wave here running at the same rate as, say, the sine wave. So what this essentially means is that we can now define our own custom LFO shapes that run at the same rate as the standard LFO. But now, yes, it is time for the main event, and that is that we now have a wavetable oscillator type on the Mini Freak. We will get into listening to it in just a second, but I want to start by managing expectations because there are some things to be aware of here. So the first thing is that this is factory wavetables. This is not the user wavetable functionality that we have on the Micro Freak. I have no inside information about whether that is something that is coming. I would guess it probably is, but take that with all of the salt in the world because I have no insider information into that. The other thing that it is worth bearing in mind is that this um, is an oscillator type that introduces some uh, more asymmetry between the two oscillators that we have on the Mini Freak because you can only have this on oscillator one. So as it stands, you can't have two instances of wave tables running at once to sort of blend them together between the two oscillators. Not at the moment. Again, who knows whether that's something that will be added in the future, but that's where we are at the moment. Okay, let's jump into actually using this oscillator type. So we're here on an initialized patch. I've just given the uh, amp a little bit of a release there. And we will get over to our wavetables. As mentioned, we have to be on oscillator one for this. So we'll scroll across to the end. Wavetable, here we are. And we're now listening to a wavetable. As I mentioned, there are a bunch of different factory wavetables. And we'll get to that in a second. But let's just talk about what our three controls are doing. So probably the most uh, important one is the wave control here, which is going to scan through our wave table. And you can hear that we smoothly interpolate between the different parts of the wave table rather than stepping, which is really lovely. And lends itself to doing sort of LFO movements in there. Just move it up into the wave table a little bit. The timbre control is pulse width, which is really, really interesting because it gets a lot of extra mileage out of our uh, each each wave. So something quite sort of sign like, we can get loads of extra harmonics in there, and if we find something richer. Kind of get our standard pulse width kind of vibe there which is really lovely to have on the shape control we have a filter and in as is the case on a lot of the filter controls other than the main filter control on the mini freak it's bipolar so at the moment it's sort of locked into the middle so we're not getting any filtering if we go positive from here We'll start to apply a high pass filter to the wave. Back to the middle, and then below here, we'll start to have a low pass to darken things. So within that sort of one uh, wavetable, we have a lot of stuff that we can get through here. Now, as I mentioned, there are a bunch of different wavetables, and to select them, you hold down shift, and as long as you're on the wavetable uh, oscillator, you can turn the type knob, and that will give you access to all of the other wavetables here. And there are a bunch, I think there's 32 uh, to begin with. Uh, so there's a loads in there for you to um, take a listen to. Uh, the, uh, the other way you can do this instantly, although I don't know why you would, uh, is in the sound edit and in the oscillator and then in the wavetable select. But that's a lot of extra button presses when you could just be shift and type. Now, pro tip, if you want to preview all of these different wavetables, what you can do is if we have our wave set in the middle like that, 
And if we assign a triangle LFO, make sure I'm triangle here. So LFO one to wave. And to a depth of 50, maybe slow it down a little bit. So that's this current wavetable that we're on now. And if we uh, hold a note here, now we are free to go through the different wavetables and audition them. I can actually tell the right knob would be good. dying for some reverb. That one's chewy, like that one. Ah, some cool harmonics in that one. <laughs> kind of a fake sync sound. It's called croak, quite froggy. It's called elastic. It's got a lovely stringy twang at the top there. That's cool. It's a really classic sounding wave table. Love that one. Some cool aggressive stuff up at the top there. That's crunchy. It's kind of like a wave folder type sound. Ooh. Whoa. That's cool. Another fake sync kind of thing. Ooh. That's such a classic wave table trick to have something aggressive right at the end there. Classic harmonics. Your harmonic series, but it sounds really nice because you're blending between them as you go. Okay, so kind of a vocal kind of thing. I bet that's cool when you start to move the timbre around as well. Classic kind of ringy overtones. Uh, loads of movement in between rather than it being like a... I like that one a lot. That's really cool. A bit more soul, just nice overtones over the top of the, the fundamental. The most classic kind of wavetable sound. Like, that's what I think of when I hear wavetable. Okay, so like a resonant filter sort of within the oscillator. That could be really cool to free up the filter to do other stuff. Just a, f a phase, phased saw. Again, really classic sort of ringy overtone wavetable sound. Wow. Yeah, it's nice at the top there. That's chill. Oh, that's really pretty with that, just some ringing harmonic. Like that. Okay, that's that's our lot there. Now you would have noticed as I moved between them, there was kind of some glitching, and that kind of maybe suggests another slight downside here, which is that the wave 
table selection is not currently something that's modulatable. Um, there is kind of a, a gap as they get loaded in, um, which is a shame because that would have been something that's really nice to modulate. But we can still jump between parts of a single wavetable, so we can still get those sort of steppy sounds as well. One of the things that Artoria have said um, is that these wavetables are a much higher resolution than the ones on the Micro Freak, um, which you know, may or may not be something that is a good thing for you, because sometimes that sort of grittiness is um, kind of a, a desirable thing. But there are ways that we can introduce that. And, and maybe we'll take a look at that. Let's build uh, a patch using this new oscillator type. Okay, let's start by choosing a wavetable. I think the one I will want to use is one that's called Scowl. Just because it has that really classic wavetable overtone thing. And we'll get rid of our LFO there on the... Yeah, that's loads we can get done with that. Okay. Um, so, um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually come across to Oscillator 2 and I'm going to use the um, Destroy mode. Just to... Um, there goes the frog. Uh, just to add some kind of bit crushing and or rather sample rate reduction and bit rate reduction. Bit reduction, I should say. Just to reduce some of the fidelity here. And then just bring my filter down to hide that a little bit. Get a little bit of um, envelope going on that filter. Uh, let's use our cycling envelope for that, just in envelope mode, and we'll go cycling envelope to cut off. Let's get that uh, wave control. Let's get that moving with the cycling envelope first of all, but perhaps we'll have it moving with something else as well. So cycling envelope to wave a little bit. Not like a super amount or anything. Pulse width control moving slowly, I think. So we'll go LFO1 to the Tamra control.
let's bring in our uh, super unison here. Uh, let's grab this. <laughs> okay, here we go. There it is. Yeah, that's a bit much. A little bit of the high pass. Okay, I'm going to put um, after touch into the filter as well, so we'll just make sure that. Um, the there we go. That's just on the aftertouch now. So fellow aftertouch, or just aftertouch in this case. If there was like a um, dun 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 kind of tweaking of that wavetable position, so let's use a um, tempo synced uh, exponential saw, probably. I think have that go into the wavetable. It's LFO two to wave. assign this to the macro assign couldn't we actually now that we can assign stuff in the uh, mod matrix to that so let's uh, assign on here that there and just turn it up here to like wherever it was it was 80 or something and then on here we'll uh, turn it back down oh it was only 40 oh, I've got leeway now so now <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, let's add some delay to that. And we'll go ping pong. Uh, ping pong sink. The one downside of the super unison is it is so stereo that it makes other stereo effects seem less stereo. I guess we had some reverb to that as well, right? Should we try a different uh, wavetable just to see what it sounds like? Because that's one of the great things about 
having these wave tables. Theater. that we can be finding in here. So there's a little patch making use of some of the new features here. Um, the wavetable oscillator is obviously a really welcome addition to the arsenal. It would be great if we could have it on both sides, I think, but at the moment that's not something we have the option to do, which is a shame. But at least we have the super unison to make it sound a lot wider than it is. So anyway, I hope that was a useful summary of the new features in this firmware and that it's given you some ideas of things to try out. If you did enjoy the video, then as always, a uh, like on the video is much appreciated. It really helps the channel out. And if you're not already subscribed, then you could also consider hitting that subscribe button as well and maybe even the bell I don't post that many videos so you won't get too bugged
Let me know in the comments how you get on with the new firmware, what features are particularly speaking to you. And until next time, enjoy exploring your instruments. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, take care. Bye-bye.